Hello, raccoons and racketeers. My name is Tibius Guyne, and welcome to Donut County. Now, I don't do a ton of Let's Playing on this particular channel because, well, I tend to be a relatively slow player getting through things, and I tend to like to take my time, and that means any series of episodes of any game I produce, it's gonna be a lot of episodes, and it's gonna take a hell of a long time, as anyone who's been following along with my Dark Souls series can attest to. However, Donut County is, first of all, I'm given to understand a really short game, which means we can get through this in hopefully just a few videos, but also a game that has been catching my attention for, you know, other reasons than just the gameplay. I've been really interested in its art style, in its visuals, and in the gameplay mechanics that it employs to communicate its story. Because, well, in short, I'm a huge fan of Katamari Damacy. I, I've sunk dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into Katamari Damacy back on the PS2 back in those days. And there's a new game in that series coming out soon, which, oh boy, definitely want to play that. Um, but anyway, I, I'm a huge fan of Katamari Damacy, and partly because that game series, if you're not familiar, it's essentially a game about rolling around a ball that picks up things as they as you touch them, and those things then get added to the ball, so the ball gets bigger and bigger as you're rolling it around, and eventually you can pick up, you know, skyscrapers and entire countries. And there's something about that game that was so meditative to me that when I saw the gameplay for Donut County in particular, I was reminded of it, and I just, I just wanted to play it, and I wanted to to play it in a video and sit around and talk about it and commentate on it and make silly cartoon voices for the characters and stuff like that. So, if that sounds at all interesting to you, well, let's get into it. So I'm going in fairly blind uh, in the sense that I've, I've, I've seen a few gameplay videos, I've seen some reviews, I've, I've seen some of the writing that's been around the game, but I haven't, you know, watched a full Let's Play series or I, and I don't really know what the story is, like how, how the story progresses. So, God, I love this visual style. Because there's a couple of different things going, okay. Mira, when are you coming into work? I'm bored. We'll figure out what the hell the cartoon voice for the raccoon is going to be. <laughs> Probably is something like that. Can I just spam ducks forever? I'm gonna try. <laughs> this is a fairly accurate representation of how I talk to my friends. Quiet, BK. I'm dead. I've died. Please have some respect. Whoa, why are you dead? The honking man woke me up again. At the honk of dawn. Honking unbelievable. They're mixing into each other. I'm not good at this. Don't worry. I'll revenge you. Be careful, dude. This guy really honks. Do I want to give her like a surfer voice? Like a California surfer voice? Yeah, whatever. Come to the donut shop and stop feeding your dog bread. He needs bread to live, BK. That's probably better. He's a certified loaf. Okay, I'm leaving in five minutes. Bye. Right. So, donut then. Ooh, hey. I can mess with things. Can I mess with something else? Does not seem like it, so... That does not do anything to... Oh, okay. So we're playing physic game already. Right then. The visual style of this game. And this is the gameplay, by the way. You control this hole in the ground, and you move it around, and as you consume things with the hole, and yes, there are so many dirty jokes, as you consume things with your hole, as you stuff your hole full of stuff, it becomes wider and bigger and able to contain ever larger things. Good lord. Not making sex jokes over the course of this is going to be a struggle. So the visual style of the game is, it, it falls into a style of, of visuals that like for me, being a, a, a you know, a, an illustrator, I most closely associate with, <laughs> come into my hole, little goose. Okay. Or not, I guess. There we go. Also the donuts. 
it's it's a style that I most closely associate with um, vector art. And vector art is um, like usually in illustration, a lot of the, the the drawings and stuff you'll see are raster art, which is to say that so someone sits down with like a, a a pen and they define, okay, this pixel should be that color, that pixel should be that color, and these are sort of. You, you, you draw it out at whatever resolution you can, and that's that's the picture you, that you get. It's raster. The other approach to that, and this is not a technical explanation, by the way, at all, is vector, or it's one of the other approaches that you can take. And vector art, by contrast... Dude, the honking stopped. Did you actually do something to the honking, man? We will return to my explanation later. <laughs> it's an adorable little raccoon. Yeah, I don't worry about him. I just delivered him a donut. Uh, okay, lol. Well, I guess it distracted him. Hey, guess what? I'm level nine now. Wow. Cool. Ducks. Yes. Ducks. More ducks. At some point, I'm going to have to try and see whether you can just do that infinitely, or if at some point something happens. You don't get it, Myra. At level 10, I earned my quadcopter. Oh, right. Sick. Congrats. We're going to buzz around like kings. <laughs> okay, see you soon, BK. Six weeks later. Aw, quadcopter died. Mira, how? How could you smash my quadcopter? Who cares about your stupid quadcopter? How could you destroy the entire town? Oh, jeez, okay. Shit got real. 999 feet below Donut County. I've never destroyed anything. I'm kind. Oh my god, what? You used that stupid app to open up holes all over town, and now we're all stuck underground. Everything here looks fine to me, except my quadcopter. I'm the victim. Will someone back me up here? BK, it is obvious that you did it. I got swallowed by a hole right after I ordered a donut from your shop. What does that have to do? With Mara smashing my quadcopter! Potter, what happened to your son? Oh, pup. My sweet pup. <laughs> Pupping. Pupping boy. He must still be up there somewhere. Okay, so is that contemporary to what's happening underground, or is this the. Left click to deploy hole. Okay, you're making it really hard for me. God damn it! Hard, I should not say that. It's making it difficult for me, Donut County, not to make lewd jokes. So, raster and vector. I, that's, I believe that's where we uh, started before we got into all of this. Vector is a process of, instead of, of, of like putting down like a, like a paintbrush on, like having a digital paintbrush and painting a thing on screen, you define mathematically the size and shape of the color surface that you want. So, like, you'll create a square, and you will tell the computer that everything within these four coordinates for this square will have this color, and you can create, like, a, a, a squiggly line uh, shape that you can tell this one should be red, and this one should be else. And what you get out of that is often artwork that looks very similar uh, to the art style of Donut County. And it is something that... You, the, uh, vector is something you're going to be super familiar with. Like, all pretty much um, all fonts, as they are rendered... Um, on a screen uh, tend to be rendered in vector um, because vector is infinitely scalable. That is to say, if you have a vector shape, the computer doesn't care what resolution it's at. Like the resolution is completely irrelevant, but um, you can, you can, you can uh, with raster, of course, like if you take a rasterized image, like a JPEG or lit literally any photo that you've ever taken with a digital camera, and you try to just scale it up and scale it up and scale it up, it's going to get blurry because the resolution of the picture just can't, you can't just keep sizing it up and expecting it to, you know, and expecting it to remain equally clear. But with vector, because it's just a mathematical, a mathematical, math, blah, mathematical <laughs> um, definition and a, and a mathematical construct, you can scale it infinitely and it will look good at any size, uh, which, is, which is the very cool thing about vector. 
Um, and yeah, vector art, a lot of it, a lot of the illustration that is done in vector tends to look like this. And the, the place you'll probably be most familiar with it is from stuff like, um, uh, like I said, text tends to be rendered in, ra in, in vector because raster would make it impossible to scale from like a four point text to a 200 point text. That's what you'll be most familiar with with the vector, but it's also something that's really liberally used in graphic design, and which is why like uh, a game like this has this super graphic art style. I think it's because it's aping some of of um, the the principles of vector art, and I just swallowed a person with my hole there, which is still tremendously dirty. Okay, so. Where the hell was I? Oh, right, ra raster and vector. So the, the the thing about this art style that appeals to me so much is first of all that it reminds me of really good vector illustration art, and I've I've always been very, I've always been very fond of that, and very jealous of of those of my friends who know how the hell to do it because I've never been able to get the grips with it. I'm, I've always been more of like I want to sit down with like a pencil and a pe or a pen and draw stuff. I, I want to actually draw. I can't do the whole defining shapes thing. And that's why I'll never be a great graphic designer is because I, it, this is one of the most comic t common tools of graphic design. And I'm just smashing all the things. And I just, I've never been able to find the patience to to learn how to really use it. Woo, they were intact. And there's a lot of interesting uh, things going on here with, well, he's floating. That kind of seems to be disadvantageous. Where the hell was I? Okay, um... Oh, oh, I see. I see. Burn him from below! Oof. That was a big one. So the graphical style... I keep meaning to talk about it, and I keep forgetting to. So the interesting... Like, if you look at just the way that the colors are presented... Holy shit! Um... What you get is these, like I said, like, the reason that it reminds me of vector art is because, for instance, here, and it's kind of troublesome with the hole, it's just kind of covering it all up, but these very sharply defined edges and these very sharply defined shapes where it's sort of implying a sandy, um, a sandy ground where sandy ground really is, like, there's really no texture anywhere in this game at all. There's no texture applied pretty much to anything. And so it has to imply the texture of things simply through the flat color surfaces that, it, that it's employing. And th one of the clever ways it does this, you can see on the ground there, where it implies this kind of rough, sandy surface just by doing a few jagged um, edges and jagged lines across the surface of, of, of this otherwise completely flat-colored thing. And something else that's interesting uh, in terms of visual style is... If you look at the shading, or rather the complete lack of shading, there's no shadows. In, like, most places in Donut County just does not employ shadows as a concept at all. Um, except as a graphical affectation. But there's no, like, um, ray casting or, you know, bump mapping or light mapping of things with, like, there's not even cell shading, really. And that's the kind of thing, like, when, when a lot of people see an art style like this, they're probably going to be inclined to call it cell shading. Um, because cell shading also has this tendency to em employ very sort of um, flat color surfaces for its for its work, but there really is no like you, as you can see as these objects rotate, they have no shadows. They cast no shadows. Go in here if you want to get yelled at by coyotes. <laughs> you can make your own bones at home. Well, okay, that's technically true, but it's also a rather disturbing fact. How many of these are there? Oh, wow, there's a lot. Okay. Wait. Succulent child safety cactus. <laughs> uh, that's quite good. Okay, these are kind of charming, these little descriptions. Anyway, let's not spend too much time on that. So, when a lot of people see an art style like this, they might go to cell shading as um, 
as a as a baseline point of reference for what the art style is. But it isn't cell shading because it's not used like the cell shading technique is you have this 3D object and you you, you project shadows onto it um according again to an algorithm of course, but that's not really what's happening here. When you see shadows here, like here we have a very dark underground environment and there is light falling down from above, but there are no shadows. Like the houses don't cast shadows, the tent doesn't cast shadows, even the light of the bonfire doesn't cause the characters to cast shadows upon the ground, at least not as far as I can see from up here. And so in order to achieve the look of this, you know, dark, dank, dour underground place, what the artists in uh, uh, behind Donut County had to do, I don't know how many people worked on this thing, is make very careful color choices um, that can imply darkness and shade and, 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 and murkiness without actually, you know, going too deep into it. And that's where you get something like the color surface of the, the top of the pillar here. It's just, is one flat color with like a few little indications of a rough surface going on. And then for the sides of the pillar, we pick another color and we just use that all the way down with few, a few little breaks to use the lighter color again. And what's interesting about Donut County is how carefully it chooses as few colors as possible to do the job that it has to do. Like there's really very little, a very small amount of colors in this game. I just wanted to surprise Pop with a donut. <laughs> Now he's floating away. Alone, Pup. No, he's not. If you got swallowed first, how do you know Pup is in the balloon? This story is full of holes. Your brain is full of holes. And so is the entire town, thanks to you. Just doing my job? Wait, I mean, not true. I'm innocent. Wait, Pup is in a hot air balloon? I saw a hot air balloon float by my ranger station. Everybody who's not the the raccoon and the girl are British, I've decided. You saw Pup. Which way was he heading? I don't know. I I got distracted. I just ordered a donut. Nice. I get hungry or now anxious. Lol? <laughs> Lol? Okay. <laughs> anxious about what? Believe it or not. Snakes. Oh man, I forgot to talk about the complete lack of shadows. So here's something interesting going on. We're supplementing um, the flat color surfaces with a gradient. Uh, now gradients, you will know, uh, are just like, just colors going from one saturation and, lumina and, and, and value to another uh, saturation and value. And they're being used very cleverly here to mark out distance. And um, Marking out distance is the thing, like, that's the, that's the problem that you're often gonna face when you're using a super flat color style like this, is that the image ends up looking flat, because, like, in, in real life, usually, things that are closer to you will have a different luminosity, they will have a, a, a put, push a different amount of light into your face, and so you will perceive them differently. But when you, every color is flat, when every color is uniform, it can be hard to do that, and so sometimes... A little bit of gradient like this, and wow, okay, that snake is jumpy, um, <clears throat> can help give you that that sense of depth that's going on. But I'm kind of curious because the gradient only seems to be applied to the background out here. Like, I don't think there's a gradient over these other little cliff faces here. The gradient is only really out here in the background on the very far back cliffs that you've got in the background, as well as the, as the, as well as the orange night sky. <laughs> Those snakes are kind of hilarious. Mom, 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 mom. Sandwich! And again, you can see the vector style being used here to imply a dark, a, a sort of rough sandy surface without having any roughness to it whatsoever. Everything is very, very smooth. Everything's very, very clean, but you can, just by choosing the right set of colors and combining them in the right ways, you can kind of imply a roughness even where none exists. And that's just like, it's just good graphics. Like it's it's just, like this is what I, <clears throat> when I when I think of graphics in a video game, <clears throat> I, I tend to think of, I mean, what, what you might expect a person to think of, which is like, oh, the, the texture density and uh, the um, and sort of the, the lighting quality and how many sort of HDR tessellation effects and stuff have they put in there. 
But for me, what's much more important than just, you know, air quotes, graphics quality. Oh, snake danger. <laughs> um, all right. That's I've got a hole with a long floppy thing sticking out. OK, OK, Donut County. All right. Fine. <laughs> um. Oh, cool. Um. Where the hell was I? I just, I got distracted by the long floppy thing that's coming out of the hole right now. Uh, um, right, so when you've got graphics, I just remembered what we were talking about. When, when you're considering graphics, what graphics are, what graphics mean, to me, this is really, like, this is much better graphics than you'd see in, like, uh, the latest Call of Duty game, at least to me. Because... This is a very careful consideration and a very, and a very careful design process of figuring out not just, you know, uh, you know what's, what's the resolution of the engine and the thing that we're going to use, but also answering some hard questions about making very careful, considered color choices for the moments that matter in the game. For example, you can see now that, that the, the time of day has become a little later. The background uh, cliffs have shifted to a purple hue, which indicates, you know, sort of a somewhat more later at night, nighttimey scenario. And like, these, to me as an artist, these are the interesting choices. Like these are the things that are that that that, that I enjoy thinking about and I enjoy considering. Is like what what were the creative choices that the artist made in order to get the the visual and the feeling of the piece that they wanted to get because the feeling you're supposed to get there in that in that scene is that it is an evening scene you know transitioning into night there's such a lot of careful color choices that you have to make to get there a large mug for dirt lovers wait what tire gloves for your car that's that's distressingly true <laughs> what jail for freaks? A live spaghetti. A live spaghetti with the ability to hate. Okay, that's... Yes, this is very true. I'll read through that on my own later on. I can't imagine that makes for great viewing. Um, so yeah, graphics to me are much more about that. It's much more about... Making careful aesthetic decisions in order to serve the mood and the visuals of a scene. And by the way, Donut County is a game you can't. You, if you did like a hyper realistic Unreal Engine 4 thing conversion of Donut County and made every character look super realistic, the basic gameplay would suffer because when everything looked completely realistic and then you see someone fall 999 feet into a hole, you would expect them to hit the ground and go splat. But because they are these little plastic-looking animal caricatures, <laughs> you can kind of you can kind of do what you want. But once again, um, as I said, notice how no character here casts shadows at all. There's a gradient going on um, from the bonfire that you can kind of see. Uh, you know, um, what's it called? Oscillating on the characters, which gives you the feeling of a campfire going on, but the characters cast no shadows. Like, and then also the bonfire casts no shadows on the characters really. Like here's where you see a little bit of, of what I would call a cell shading technique coming in with the very, very simple shapes of the characters being illuminated selectively by, you know, the, wom, 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 the, the oscillation of the fire. But again, it's hardly realistic shading by any sense of the imagination because all the character shapes are so simple. Like the fur of the dog over here, there's really, there's no fur texture anywhere on him and, so, and thus there's no texture going on, no jaggedness going on with the shadows, which would be going on if he had actually, you know, had model fur on him anyway. LOL, sounds like you should be thanking me for solving your snake problem. Wait, so it was you who opened up the holes? What? No! I'm just saying, whoever did do it was totally doing you a solid. He's probably a really cool and nice guy. Hmm. Did anyone else see Pup? Yup, I saw Pup. With my telescope. I guess he's the scarecrow from, uh, uh, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. No. You mean my telescope? That's what I said. My telescope. Where did you see him? Well, me and Pepper were feuding again, so I moved the trailer to Mint River. He took a liking to this bird! Heh, <laughs> yep, a bird made for liking. 
I was admiring this bird till I was hit with a hunger. So I ordered a donut by way of this donut county app. Then the hole came. Oh no, the hole came. Uh. <laughs> see what I see. This is what I mean in terms of the characters being. If if the characters were very realistic, this game would not be charming. This game would not be fun or indeed funny at all, except sort of absurdistly funny. But <laughs> the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Let's just uh, go, go, go in the hole, little doggy. You're distracting me. <laughs> but when the characters are this plastic and they are so, like, so obviously physics objects rather than being any description of persons, like, they're, they're not real. It works so much better. So, what do we do with water? Wait, those are cinder blocks. How the hell are they floating? At least the rocks don't float. Wait. Oh, it's a drinking bird. Oh, drinking bird. Drinks the water, Bing. Drinking bird. Drinks the water all up for me. That fucking dog. <laughs> it was just really well done. Sleep with the fishes. Ah. Apparently, the bird has like an infinite perch. <laughs> Nom. Consume. Oh, okay. Now it doesn't have an infant perch anymore. I got the bird. So yeah, and also by the speaking of uh, uh, Katamari Damacy, by the way, Katamari Damacy is a game that has a very similar portable outhouse. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's wow, that's savage. Ukulele piece bottom half of a mouse guitar. <laughs> Anyway, I, I want to read the Trashopedia, but I'm going to do that on my own time. I keep forgetting what it is I'm talking about. This is, this, this is compelling Let's Playing, everybody. Wow! So are you saying you're, like, in love with a bird? Yup! Is that illegal? BK, it's not about the bird. It's about the bird! Myra, it is about the bird! You're hopeless, dude. Huh? Huh? Hopeless. We are all hopeless now. Coyote, I thought you moved away to the desert. I did. Hmm. I want the... He has to have a French accent. I did. BK must be targeting folks who are down on their luck. Coyote, you're the original owner of the Donut County Donut Shop, right? Yep. But it went out of business. When the raccoons moved into town... I sold the raccoons to the shop and moved out to the desert. Oh no. I'm sorry, Coyote. Can't be helped. A coyote's life is like a sad country tune. I made a modest living, selling baked doubles. Suppose it was my way of giving back to folks. This game is so fucking charming. And it's, and it's a game that really, really wants to be charming. Like, it's trying really hard to be charming and kind of quirky and weird. Oh, hello, Coyote. How are you, mon ami? I really like the face of that thing. It's a game that's trying really hard to be charming, and sometimes that can be kind of unappealing. Like, it, so you can tell when a game is kind of trying a little bit too hard to be quirky and fun. Can I blow up the tent? Okay, something's clearly happening. Eat the birds. Eat the birds, toppins are back. Eat the fence. 
eat the fence. Yes. Yes. Cons hey, how did he get over there? Consume all. Lump. <laughs> He's falling down in the tent. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Raccoon Company hurl me into a dumpster. That's a good little subtitle. I do love the visuals, though. Anyway, that is my sad story. BK, don't you have something to say to Coyote? Yeah! Vegetables stink! Yeah! Lol. <laughs> I mean, like, an apology? I'm sorry you think veg- uh, uh, Mixing up the voices now. I'm sorry you think vegetables taste good? Lissai. Maybe they do stink. I suppose my sweet tooth was feeling lonesome, and that is why I ordered the donut from y'all. Oh god, he says y'all. You can't say y'all in a French accent. See, Myra? Why should I apologize for delivering this pathetic vegetable-eating coyote a donut? You wrecked his business. Twice. And stop saying you delivered donuts. What exactly do you think donuts are? Who can say? Exactly! Who can say? Roma gets it! What is a donut without a hole? Wow, very good question. We should really stop to ponder this for as long as possible. Um, a donut without a hole is still a donut. Yeah, like jelly donuts, long johns, fritters? Donut holes. Wait, donut holes don't have holes? They don't have holes, they are the holes. Wow, that's pretty deep. Don't change the subject, BK. Nikki, Roma, you two just moved to Hopper Springs, right? Yes, we moved out for our retirement to watch the bunnies. Bunnies at heart, Nikki and I. Married 40 years. They're British now. I've decided that they're British. Did you order a donut too? Roma got a new phone, so we ordered donuts to celebrate. You should just not order. Or Who the hell orders donuts? Is that a thing Americans do? Just like you can buy donuts in in a store, and you can have pizza delivered. But I have not, to date, heard of having do donuts like delivered. That is that is strange and an alien concept to me. Although I suppose there's nothing weird about it, really. It's just what donuts. It's I just don't think of donuts as like delivery food. Oh, hello. Um. Oh, no. No, don't make me... Don't make me... Oh, no, don't make me eat the cute little things. They're so cute. I don't want to eat them. I, I don't want to make them fall down the hole. That's not nice. Uh, I guess I have to, though. <clears throat> no! Oh, they're so cute, though. Oh. Oh. Oh, they were bunnies. And bunnies breed. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's, I, we just we just enabled some romance. And I think we should all feel good about that. That that romance can blossom even when two rabbits are in your hole. Okay, no, this is getting away from me. Okay, so clearly I need to eat something big so I can make the... So I can make the hole bigger. And then two more rabbits fall down. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This is a family-friendly channel. This is a family-friendly channel. Come on. Okay, I guess... Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, with the power of love, anything is possible. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, my channel is so getting demonetized. <laughs>
Uh, sweet and pure rabbit love. That is how my channel dies. Not by the algorithm, but from rabbits fucking in a hole. <laughs> oh, good lord. Okay, that's... that's about... That's about half an hour, um, which I think is probably a good uh, duration for an episode. Um, so I will tell you that if you've enjoyed this, if you enjoy watching me let's play a game and being weirded out by all the rapids that are now fucking in my hole, good lord, and you can hit the like button. And that would be very kind of you. And you can also subscribe to the channel if you are uh, indeed so inclined. And if you are not, of course, that is completely okay. Um, I do have a Patreon that you can support if you want to help me make more videos like this and also pay my rent and buy food and, and things like that, which are good, because then I can order donuts, apparently. It's the thing you can do. I can, I can order donuts. I, I would love to order some donuts someday. Uh, so if you want to help enable me to do that, there's a Patreon that you can support if you want to and if you're able to. And if you're not, of course, don't worry about it. I just thank you very much for watching. If you've not liked this video at all, there is fortunately a dislike button created specifically for that purpose that you can click on. I should warn you, however, that if you do, I may come around to your house and just talk at you in an obnoxious raccoon voice for like hours. And not because I, I'm annoyed that you clicked the dislike button, but just because I'm under an ancient curse that forces me to go to people's houses and talk at them in an annoying raccoon voice. It's something my family has been living with for generations. We pissed off. And like my grandfather pissed off a raccoon wizard um, during World War II. Don't ask. I mean, every I, I tried asking him about it, and he just got this thousand-yard stare and and peaced out for the evening, and I don't know what the hell was going on. But, but basically, raccoon wizards... So yeah, thank you very much for watching.